more relaxed person. I came from Puerto Rico to Paris, so grew up in Paris on a rough camp, and this is where I had a box. This is where I had to become a boxer. And, uh, you know, I became a good amateur fighter, amateur boxer that is. Then I became a good professional fighter with potential to become a better professional. A lot of the kids did not necessarily became great amateur boxers, but the boxers for that matter, but they became great, you know, life contenders. You know, a lot of these kids that would finish college, you know, a lot of the kids that were going, you know, they were going the wrong, through the wrong path or, or going on the wrong path and and make me give give them a better better direction. I was never good at sport. And, the, and any and the other sport, like you know, where I come from, the Caribbean, and play a lot of baseball, and I was never good at basketball or baseball. For some reason, I was just being out of it. It was boxing, and it was it became like a second nature for me. This is 1978 when I first landed here in Jersey, and I was excited. I was excited because it was a new place, but I was lost. You know, they spoke the language. Had a heavy accent. So there was a lot of hurdles that I had to overcome. Yet I was never afraid. On the road, I met a, a bunch of wonderful people that really, you know, kept me motivated. The motivation to, to for me to keep going. I found out as I came along. I found out that I had the same ability that I had as a boxer. I could have as a coach. No, I have to see. It's, it's wrong, it's not that man. Box. Eventually we're gonna catch you. It's a great spin because you meet people from all walks of life. You know, from all ethnics and all backgrounds. This is wonderful. You know, because a lot of the guys that come around here, we do this for the lower sport. We don't necessarily try to aspire, you know, to get. I mean, it'll be good, don't get me wrong, if you get to build a champion yourself and bring them to the top and gain all that glory, but. Our main goal here is to have fun. Along with that, a little discipline with it, which is, you know, which come in handy, you know? Give some of these kids, not a grown up, because like, he's already, he already need to do this. He's a college graduate, he's a professional officer. So he do this for the lower sport. For the fact that he likes the environment, he knows what we do here. Well, it's for the kids too, you know? You know, we, we kind of give the kids uh, a better sense of direction, which is a good thing. It's always good to get, but it's better to give. But well, in order for you to get, you gotta eat. I was an amateur boxer, I was set up for about five, six, seven years. And uh, became a pro. The problem with me was I became a pro a little later. And though I had the potential to become a better professional fighter, when it came for me to sign as a professional, things totally changed. It's a whole different perspective, you know. And, uh, and so I was kind of lost. But I, I, I wanted to do it. I, I really want to pursue this, this dream. And yeah, I fought, I fought uh, number eight content. His name was Murky Sosa. He was this, uh, a guy from New York, a great fighter. He fought Roy Jones uh, for the for the championship and got stopped in the eighth or ninth round, I believe. But uh, gave Roy Jones a hell of a fight. I just wanted to fight anybody. Anyway. It requires a lot more than just, you know, your thoughts and your mind. It requires more discipline, more dedication, which I kind of lost in the way. It was exciting. Yeah, definitely was exciting. This kid here, this, this kid here uh, that came around, he was an orphan. His mother died when he was young. And when he first came around, he was very stubborn, very hyper kid, and, and when he posts his will in the gym. And in the beginning, I thought he was just, he was just being a joker. And you know, he wasn't gonna take it serious. Little that I knew, he became a, I make him a Golden Glove champion. And then he faded away, he moved on, served the Marine, came out of the military service and turned pro. Right now he's three and all. Then I had this other kid here, this other kid that is still around with me when he first came around, was a very shy kid and uh, he had issues with his personality. And uh, he didn't have a lot of confidence in himself and He's, even though this day he's still with me, he came a Golden Globe uh, contender, not a champion, a contender, fought with us, competed with us for all, for a few years. But you know, his fate was destined to be something else. He went to college, finished college. Yeah. The guy is a great kid, great kid. He works with, uh, with people with uh, physical disabilities. And that's something that I feel that I help accomplish. 
or something that I felt that I ingrained this kid to make him a better person. And even to this day, he comes around and uh, trains with me, just, you know, for the love of the sport. So I, I feel that, you know, I, I've done a lot, but, uh, you know, I feel that I can do more. Who knows? You know, maybe one time, my, one kid might come around and become the next Mike Tyson. Who knows? Or become the next Sugar Ray Leonard. Or Jerry Cooney, for that matter. Uh, it's been a great experience overall. Boxing, you know, has done me good. You know? It's a great experience. It's fun. It's a lot of fun. Don't be laughing. Why are you laughing? He's like, this is the one with the laugh. As long as I got breath of my health and, and I can walk, I, I will keep doing this. You know, I'll just keep back what I know, which is boxing. Thanks, Lucia. Yeah, Matthew, you just give me the bag in there.